Hey kids, you are about to listen to a comedy podcast. This means that none of this is medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast featuring Dr. London Smith. Slide into Dr. London's DMs for some straight fire medical advice. Introducing your host, Dr. London Smith. Hello, and welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast, where we discuss fitness and health, and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives, but without it being so boring. I'm your host, Dr. London Smith. I'd like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We have received some complaints about the overuse of technical terminology I've been using, such as spermatozoa and wholesome family fun, so I will try to tone it down a little as we go along. Here to help with that is our producer Cameron. With our arms wide open. Oh, Can I sing okay. that song on the podcast? I, I don't know if we, we might have to pay for the rights to that. Oh, that's fine. We have the budget for it. I don't uh, see. I don't think that we'd because the sponsors. So well, when, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when when I did our monthly budget for this month, I kind of I had an inkling that I was going to want to sing different Creed songs, and so I kind of put that aside. Do we? Do we have the budget Under for any of it? the sunlight? Well, yeah. I think the budget is technically unlimited. No, so I think you're thinking of the amount of money that you think I have. Yes, the budget. So no, no, that's not the budget. We have a separate budget based on the the money we get from sponsors. Right. But okay, well, the sponsor you- this week is with arms wide open by Creed, right? No, so if you picked a song and they aren't paying us for it, then that's not a sponsor. That's just you decided to sing that song. With our arms wide open. So, well, l- let me introduce you real quick. So uh, when Cameron, that's who's been talking, uh, when he found out um, what he thought was his family's very personal tradition of Thanksgiving uh, and how to celebrate it, when he found out that that was more widely practiced than he was brought up to believe, he made it his mission to understand why and bring those findings to the podcast to help our content stay relevant to every listener. And despite what we may learn from history textbooks, uh, Cameron unfortunately remains resolute in his opinion that Thanksgiving was, in fact, stolen from his family, and consequently, he has been engaging in a number of lawsuits over the matter. That's right. So, Cameron, who are you suing? For stealing Thanksgiving from your family, the whole damn system. Is that what, all of it? What it's top says down on the paperwork. Or Where do you it, think this goes? How high do you think this goes? Well, that's at least to the president. Minimum. Yeah, maybe even above the president. Who is that? Um, I don't know. Is that what Tony Blair is? I never asked him. Okay. Okay, well, I think uh, it's Tony Blair. So so that's why I'm suing for stealing my Thanksgiving. Both the president and Tony Blair? Yeah. Okay. My family started this tradition. People say there's all, there's this story that everyone likes to tell about like the pilgrims kind of, uh, you know, breaking bread with the Native Americans. Mm -hmm. But really, my family invented it 35 years ago. Okay. As a way to generate turkey sales. And now it's become this sort of national tradition, which I think is really beautiful and great because it reminds me of, you know, my parents. Right. But the people injecting this narrative, I don't like it. Yeah, you feel like it's uh, encroaching upon your family's thing. Yeah, my history, my lineage. Which is that 35 years ago... My dad said, let's start Thanksgiving. Well, you know that, like, it was going on before 35 years ago, though. In all your Mm. research, did that come up? No, not at all. Well, I... The internet wasn't around then. How would I look that up? Well, 
now the internet is around, and so you can right. retroactively look up what happened before 35 uh, years ago. Yeah, the oldest reference I can find is my dad saying, let's start Thanksgiving to get rid of some of these turkeys. Right. Okay. Well, uh, also with us today is Did You Dome the House? With our arms wide open. My family started this tradition. My family started this tradition. And coming up, Cameron tells me that we can expect a guest on the show, so look forward to that. Before we move on, I would like to address a bit of listener feedback. Quote, John, plant this for you. Read till the end. It's adorable. Postbox, I sent an angel to watch over your house last night, but it came back and asked why. The angel said, the angels don't watch over angels. Twenty angels are in your world. Ten of them are sleeping. Nine of them are playing. And one is reading this message. God has seen you struggling with some things, and God says it's over. A blessing is coming your way. Tulip, if you believe in God, send this to 14 friends, including me. If I don't get it back, I guess I'm not one of them. As soon as you get five replies, someone you love will quietly surprise you. Not joking, Maple Leaf. Pass this message on. Please don't ignore it. You are being tested, and God is going to fix two big things tonight in your favor. Whoa. If you believe in God, drop everything and pass it on. Tomorrow will be the best day of your life. Don't break this. Send this to 14 friends in 10 minutes. It's not that hard. However, sent this to you must care about you. You are an angel strawberry smile with a strawberry. End quote. Wow. wow. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is going to happen to you, Dr. London? Uh, it That's sounds so like exciting. a lot of good things. I know. And I guess I didn't mean for it to be this way, but it said to send this to 14 friends in 10 minutes. And uh, I think we've gotten up to maybe 14 total listeners, like to, to a given episode. We've had 14 total people listen. Yeah. So hopefully. I think- yeah, spread across the 20, 23, 24 episodes that we've done, I think. 14. 14. I, you know, if you were to count, to. if you were to count like the, you know, the, the bots and spoofing that we've set up to yeah. boost our numbers. Right. Sure, maybe that's closer to three or four. But yeah. uh, w- once you add those in, I think 14. Yeah. We've done it. All right. Well, so to address this question. So first of all, thank you so much for your feedback. We always appreciate hearing back from our listeners. Uh, To answer your question, I would not put myself in the category of an angel, although that is certainly flattering to hear. Uh, And I also cannot medically speak to the number of angels watching over a given person. Um, It is a wonderful sentiment. In the arms of an angel. Yeah. Under the sunlight. And I appreciate such a positive note from our listeners. Thanks again for reaching out. Under the sunlight. And now for a tale from the neurology clinic. We had a 54-year-old male patient present with vague symptoms Blech. of feeling out of it. Ugh. Yeah. Gross. So he How boasted, old he? though. He was 54 years old. And he could get around and stuff? Yeah, no, he was ambulatory. He he could walk. He, like they didn't they didn't wheel him into you, and he you know to so he could pass on. No, no, this was not his deathbed. Ugh, this was fifty four. I Ugh. know it, and you'd be surprised, Cameron. I mean, the older you get, the more you think that certain ages aren't that old anymore. Yeah, but I mean, I imagine by the time I hit that age, I'm probably not thinking of much anyway, right? I mean. Well, well, no, actually, at How that much end, can my brain process? At th- if it's mush at that point. Uh, I, 
and once again, I feel like you you might be surprised by how uh, it's like a it's like a diaper cognizant. full of carrots. That's basically what your brain is at by the time you reach. How, how, what was the age again? Fifty four. Oh my wow. gosh! Are, yeah, should I, you be helping him right now? No. So well, uh, let me go on with the story then. Oh yeah, sorry. So he he presented with vague symptoms of feeling out of it. Uh, He boasted that he never went to the doctor, but he admitted that years ago he had been told that his blood pressure was high. And then, indeed, in clinic, uh, his blood pressure was remarkably elevated uh, at 183 over 120, which is actually high enough to be known as hypertensive urgency. Uh, Though his physical exam was mostly normal, he, um, he just had a slight decreased motion of one arm while he walked uh we sent him to the emergency room to normalize his blood pressure later we received a call from that er so this man who had bragged about never going to the doctor he had a subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, also known as just a brain bleed uh, likely due to that chronic uncontrolled and hypertension there were, and there were spiders in there no okay i'm sorry i should explain that so this subarachnoid hemorrhage oh so you have you have a space in your brain called the subarachnoid space. It's like a layer of your brain. So it's dug down deeper than a spider could dig. That's insane, no. Doctor London. No, so that's just that's the wild. term for it. Subarachnoid is it's sub subarachnid means brain bug. So it's just it's just bleeding in the brain. That's all. That's all that that means. So, so once it gets in there, what does it do? Does it lay eggs? Does it? you know kind of control you or no no what's going on well for for this patient it was just blood pressure and then basically it sprung a leak so to speak in the brain Mm. but that leak was blood and like a blood because spiders aren't good at repairing the damage that they cause sure Uh, they're great at building webs but you know they're not you know a leak that's going to go right through a spider web it's so, so subarachnoid space isn't is not a spider. I, I'm gonna go ahead. And, I can't emphasize that enough that this was not a spider. It's just a similar portion of a word. I don't know oh. if you've heard of the term prefix or suffix. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's in space. No. Okay. Okay. I see the confusion there. So space is so a what, term uh, for just. Sorry, a, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of getting the, you know. C- getting freaked out here a little bit. What what do I need to do, Doctor London, to prevent space spiders from embedding themselves in my skull? Okay, so with this patient, the problem was that uh, he didn't go for regular checkups of the doctor, just okay. like he was bragging. And so he had once gone somewhere, and they had tested his blood pressure, and it was high. And so what you should do, uh, gen- just generally, um, you should go to a doctor regularly. Okay, you should see your um, what, what's called a primary care physician, and then it, to prevent anything like this from ever happening, once they see your blood pressure go up, they right. can actually give you medication to control it. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So, what are some early signs that you might have some space spiders embedding themselves into your soul? Okay. Well, so once again, this is not spiders, but it's. Uh, high blood pressure. So okay. you know that blood pressure cuff they put on your arm that squeezes your arm. That's where you get it from. No, 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 no. Why That's... would anyone do that? I've done that. You've done what? I've done that machine. You're talking about like at a grocery store. Yeah, yeah, and then it checks your. And that's, no, that's what gives you high blood pressure, which is what gives you the space spiders. This is no. Why? I don't understand why they would offer that service. No, so that's it's the, just a, there needs to be a disclaimer that says that on those machines. So it's actually it's more of a measurement. It, it's a it monitors the level of well the blood pressure, but it's I still guess, monitoring me now. No, no, only while you're in there. Gosh. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, we can go ahead and move on from there, though. Yeah, that's fine. I guess I'm just a lot more concerned than I was a few minutes ago. Okay. Uh, And now for today's medical topic, pericardial effusion. Previously, we have talked about acute pericarditis, which is an inflammation of the sac surrounding the heart. Pericardial effusion, on the other hand, 
is when that acute pericarditis leads to an exudation of fluid into the pericardial space, or in other words, uh, increased fluid in the sac surrounding the heart. This can be asymptomatic or can occur in association with salt and water retentive states, uh, like congestive heart failures, liver cirrhosis, and uh, protein losing problems in the kidney, uh, known as nephrotic syndrome. Uh, so this um, pericardial effusion, it can be diagnosed with echocardiogram, which is when they use an ultrasound to look at the heart. And this approach is generally used with any patient who presents with acute pericarditis. Uh, treatment will depend on how much fluid has accumulated and whether so, this fluid... Like, what's, yeah? it eat, what's it eating on? I'm sorry, what is what eating on? The space spiders. Sorry, okay. I can't let go of that. Okay. That's like so, it's that's tripping me out too much. Is it feasting on me? Because there's not any like flies and stuff in my skull, right? Yeah. So I should clarify that, and I'm sorry, this is my fault. I I probably didn't explain it properly. Okay. So the subarachnoid space is just a space within your brain. Yeah. So it's it's not a spider. Subarachnoid is a term for that, like a certain layer of your brain. Does that what make does sense? What does it want? What does it want from me? So it's, I'll give it whatever it wants. Yeah. So um, what How do it I tell? wants? Can it hear me as I? Okay. Let me. No. So what it wants is Mr. For you Space, to... Mr. Space Spider. Let me. Can I? Because okay. it could. It should be able to hear me. My voice, right? Just like I can hear my own voice. From I don't in my think head. so. It sounds like you need this, though. Okay. Mr. Space Spider. If I speak at a, a deeper voice, will it hear me? Like through the vibrations. Mr. Space Spider. Please I... remove yourself from my cranium. Mr. Space Spider, communicate with me, please. Okay, I don't think that's... I'm not getting anything. Yeah. Those machines really need to tell you at the grocery store. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, let me finish up with this. So. Yeah, oh yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. With, what, with what, whatever you were talking about. Yeah, pericardial effusion. So the way you treat that. Uh, treatment will actually depend on how much fluid has accumulated and whether this fluid is compromising the heart's ability to pump. Um, if it is diagnosed as simply a pericardial effusion, though, the typical approach is more in the realm of watch and wait, and then you just get repeat ultrasounds as you go. And then depending on how things go, it might go away on its own or might require intervention. So is it like a pet? Like, is it a, is it a pet? Do I own it? No. Like, okay, if so I get it out, do I need to be feeding it? No. So Okay, so for subarachnoid hemorrhage, you don't... Uh, if it's a subarachnoid hemorrhage, what you need to do is just get to the ER. If, if you have that. Okay. Okay. But otherwise... Yeah, I, I think I have the first at least six seasons... Okay, no, I'm sorry. I should say emergency room, like the physical place. Oh, yeah, no, I know what it stands for. Yeah, but but what I mean is not the show, but the location, like in the hospital. Yeah, that's it's set. That's where it's set. Okay, no, I, and this in real life is what I mean. I know it's, and I, I know it's based on real life. Yeah, oh, saying, yeah. But I'm saying in real life, you actually have to go physically to the location. It, you can't watch it from your room. You have to actually go to... Oh, no, I can. I actually... So I ripped the DVDs onto, like, a local media server. So I can watch it from any room in the house. Yeah. So what I'm saying is you actually just go to the hospital in, in actuality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like I was saying, any room in the house. It's all hooked up. You could watch okay. it, too, if you wanted. No, no, I think I'm all right. Um, okay, go back to the spider stuff. Sorry, I, I'll stop interrupting. Well, actually, we had already gotten past the spider stuff a while ago. Um, in fact, I didn't really mention spiders at all. Uh, but we can go ahead and move on. All right, uh, Cameron, do we have any sponsors today? We don't have any sponsors today, Dr. London, but I was thinking maybe we could play sort of a game. Not really a game, more just me asking you health questions, which is sort of a game. Okay. The holidays are here. We just had Halloween a few weeks ago, and it was spooky and it was scary. 
And now we've got Thanksgiving right around the corner, Dr. London. Aren't you excited for that? Oh, yeah, it's coming up. What do you what, what do you usually do for Thanksgiving? Uh, well, I do what most people do, I think, and I go see family. That's uh, And we eat a lot, you know, and then there's also, the, of course, the Black Friday sales, that kind oh, of yeah. thing. Yeah, what do you do for Thanksgiving? Oh, sort of the same. Eat a lot of food, Black Friday sales. Okay. Okay, well, that's, you know, uh, yeah, that sounds the, fun. Not the family part, but, you know. Well, why, what do you do? Uh, so Thanksgiving Day, what do you do? Well, um, I mean, like I said, I eat a bunch of food and, uh, you know, buy some stuff on Black Friday just because my family's not, you know, um, around anymore during this uh, during these times, which could be hard on holidays. Okay. Well, where where is your family? Um. Yeah, they I'm sorry go to hear a, that. Um, yeah. They go on a carnival cruise every Thanksgiving. Oh. Um. And I could I could go with them, but I don't. I'm I'm kind of bored of cruises. We've gone on so many, so and it's really hard. Okay. What? Well, so the reason the reason you feel this distance yeah. is because you just don't feel like going. Yeah. And it's is is it a thing where it's you like, tough you can't, seeing people you can't take time off? You know, people it, like, like yourself, that? you know, brag about, oh, I'm with my family. Oh, I love being with my family during Thanksgiving. Just like everyone else. Everyone else is with their family. No one could possibly, you know, not have a family or not have their family around. And here I, I am and so. I and I'm sitting there and I'm like, Well, I don't have my family. I don't have anything. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. It it sounds though like you're phrasing it like you don't have a family, but it sounds yeah. like you very much have a family, and it's more a conscious decision to to not be around them. Well, yeah, sure, because I don't want to go on the cruise because I'm bored of it. I've done it so much. Right? I, isn't and I, don't you think that's maybe a little hard? Don't you think that maybe you should consider that when you're just blabbing about your family? Yeah, I guess. T- to me, if I was, you know, if my family was able to go on a cruise every Thanksgiving, then maybe we, like, that sounds like a great alternative. Oh, yeah. You just love eating in those same, 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 the, 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 those same restaurants every single time. Sure, sure, yeah. I, you love hanging, I, out on, hanging out on the deck with all those people? Yeah, well, it's a great way to meet people, get to know some new faces in a different setting as opposed to just being at just, home. Just dripping in privilege. Don't even realize it. It's fine. Okay. Well, and you don't even know what it's like to be bored of cruises, do you, Doctor London? I guess not. To have so, gone on so many that you don't want to go on anymore, so you can't even see your family. Oh. So you keep I'm using sorry. like the words you can't see your family and yeah. But you know your family. Maybe that's hard for you to picture. Maybe that's hard for you to wrap your mind around. Yeah. But anyway, this isn't what I wanted to talk about. Anyway. Now I'm in a bad mood. Oh, I'm but we can sorry. get back. We can we can get to what we were talking about. I was just gonna list a bunch of Thanksgiving foods and ask you, like, you know, from a medical perspective, what you, your thoughts on them are. Okay. That's all. Can sure, I? Can sure, I okay. do that? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. <clears throat> well, let me get in a good mood first. Okay. Say some things you, that'll put me in a good mood. Yeah, I was gonna say, how do you get in a good mood? Because I feel like I usually, whenever I talk, you sort of. God, I I'm say, so mad. I'm dr- okay. Um. Uh, happy. Uh, okay. Enjoyable. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, liking today, liking this moment. Okay. What are some things that it will make me happy? Uh, if you talked about uh some Thanksgiving food. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah. I have written down. That's what I. That's what. No that way. Was the you were yeah. thinking ahead. Oh yeah. Thank you. Wow. You're a planner. Oh, thank you. Look who's a planner. Oh, Look who did I it. I am. Yes, I am. Uh, okay, uh, anyway, so turkey. Yeah. Tell me your thoughts on turkey, Dr. London, from a medical perspective. Well, it's uh, sort of famous for having tryptophan in it, so it makes mm-hmm. you sleepy. Um, and, uh, well, in, in general, uh, a diet that's heavier in meats, and, of course, once a year splurge, maybe not such a big deal, but... Generally, you want to have less meat in your diet and more fruits and vegetables, for right, uh, right. especially for like 
well for for a number of health benefits but um the one that comes to mind currently is that the colon to prevent colon cancer uh your diet can have a huge effect on that uh and but do you, you like know. any turkey do you do you like turkey dr london sure sure it's all right like i i don't like it too dry well you say you say uh eating more fruits and vegetables which leads me to my next question what about mashed potatoes that's a vegetable uh, right yeah yeah i like it it's once again, around the holidays, a lot of times they'll put so much salt and uh, butter on it and maybe even cheese or whatever. Right. Uh, and sour cream that usually I don't uh, like that. That's a little excessive. But w- once again, once a year, that kind of thing can work. Uh, but yeah, those are uh, it's it's a vegetable and it's uh, there are health benefits there. What about so this is my favorite Thanksgiving meal, duck butt. Uh, okay, well, I, I'm not as familiar with duck butt. Is that... The butt of a duck? Yes. Okay. That that was my first question. Uh, is that, like, is that, like, for your family a specific thing? Or? I don't think so. I think it's a famous Thanksgiving meal, which my family invented, so... Yeah. That well, was... I, I asked we kind of established from the beginning 35 years ago. A, a standard traditional Thanksgiving meal is a big turkey and a big duck butt. Yeah, well, so the reason I ask is because it doesn't sound traditional for what I know about Thanksgiving. Right, but it sounds like you don't, you and your family that you love to see all the time, you guys don't follow, you know, tradition. Well, no, I I think we do. We We don't go on cruises. Yeah, but you don't have duck butt at all. Yeah, no, but I also haven't even seen duck butt like in the stores, or oh, well, what sections of the store do you usually go in? Well, that would be in the meat section, right? Like right, deli and poultry and stuff. Yeah, I haven't seen it there. Yeah, it's in the butt section of the meat section. It's I I haven't seen that section that I know of. Oh, you haven't seen the butt section? No, is it? How does it look? Uh, like a shelf full of a bunch of butts. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, well, then let's move on. Let's go to the next yeah, one. Yeah, I was going to say the health benefits. I'm not sure, but. All right. And then this is another one of my favorite Thanksgiving meals, hoof. Hoof? Mm-hmm. See, that doesn't even sound edible. What do you mean? This like, is one of my favorite kind of post-Thanksgiving snacks. Well, a hoof to me. Oh, like sounds once you like... finish just kind of chewing on some hoof. Oh, that's a, that is sweet. Well, a hoof to me sounds like something that you like. It's very hard and not really something you can bite into. You kind of you kind of gnaw on it. It's like okay. a jawbreaker. Okay, D- and you do you actually eat it or okay? So it's more of a. Well, like, yeah, you swallow it. Do you? Sw- like you kind of gnaw on it? it for a while, and then as the pieces chip off, you swallow it. You can you spit it, it out and maybe put yeah. it on a roll or something like that if that's what you wanted. That's not for me, but I don't know how your family does it. I, you guys don't even do duck butt, so I, I don't want to question how you guys eat your hoof. But yeah, well, actually, my family, uh, yeah, we don't eat hoof or duck butt. Um. I, like and these, this is all okay. for me. Maybe it's an education. I just haven't seen this before. So um, what? Are, I'm confused. What do you guys even do at thanks? Okay, so your Thanksgiving is you see this famous family that you love to see all the time that you keep bragging about, right? But yeah. you guys, you guys, you guys eat turkey and mashed potatoes, and that's it. And you just sit in a circle and just stare at each other. Is that it? I mean, d- no depends one's chewing on, on any hoof or. Well, you say it like hoof chewing is Squeezing the duck butt out. I'm sorry, squeezing the duck butt out? Yeah, to get all the stuff out of it before you eat it. I'm sorry, is is the duck butt still filled with fecal matter? Well, it might be. That's why you got to squeeze first. Wait, is it cooked? I, I mean, you can cook it. That's... Oh, that just depends on how you prepare duck butt? Yeah, I mean... I guess you could buy a cooked turkey, but most of the times you're just going to buy a turkey raw and then you're going to cook it at home. So you can right. do whatever you want with it. I, I don't, I'm not in charge of that. But with the duck butt, you, 
I, I'm asking because usually whenever you cook, you like put in a stuffing or whatever. Yeah. But for duck butt, you're saying you just like while you're eating it, you squeeze it out the the, the fecal matter. I would say the safest option is to do it before you eat it and before you cook it and after while you're eating it. I would say that's the only way to guarantee that you're clearing everything you need to clear. Okay. All right. Well, it, it sounds it sounds pretty odd to me. Well, anyway, um, okay. Should we just move on to the next one then? Oh, there's I got one more one more food example. Okay. And I know you guys have this for okay. Thanksgiving. Sure. Person pie. Uh, Cla- that's a classic dessert. The most common dessert. Come on, Doctor London. Per- what does your family even do? I, okay, I I want to. Let me try to wonder what you mean here. What okay. is what is person? Okay, person pie. Right. Because I don't want to jump to an assumption here. You. Well, uh, is it made what of? What is that supposed to mean? What does that mean? Is a person pie? So it's made by a person. Yes. Okay, and that's how it gets its name. It's like made by a certain person, or mm, no? Nope. Okay. I and I'm trying person to think. Pie, of, I don't know how. I don't know how I can be clear about this. Is it? I like. I I just wouldn't think it of you. Um. What? Uh, is is it hu- made of human meat? Dr. London. No. Okay. Okay, good. I'm good. not a I... cannibal. You do, you guys seriously don't eat person pie for after your Thanksgiving meal. Well, now I I don't know what what is in it. What's in person pie? It's not a human meat. It's like hair and fingernails and stuff. Oh. Um but that I don't know if that's that big of an improvement. So so it's does your family I'm not a cannibal. Yeah, well that this is better. This is better than what I thought. Um it's, Yeah, it's not like a dead person. But it's the it dead is, skin cells, sure. Right. So Yeah, you maybe all, so maybe maybe, you know, my aunt Martha, maybe she scrapes off some of her bunions into the pie. Sure. Oh, so this is because I was thinking to get enough to fill a pie, you'd maybe have to, like, this would be a project, essentially. Like, people have to go, when they get a haircut, they collect it in a bag. So well, like that? Is, this is supposed to be the part that brings the families together, is everyone kind of takes their excess whatever and kind of throws it into a bucket. And that gets turned into the person pie that everyone enjoys after the meal. How else does the family find unification? And this, sorry, use the word enjoys. D- does the whole family enjoy this? Oh yeah, absolutely. Does it taste g- good? I mean, it depends on what you flavor it with. It's kind of different year to year. Well, what do you? What some what years you... are like you know pussier, whereas some years maybe are a little stinkier. <laughs> uh-huh. It kind of just depends on what the ratio of things are on any given year. How ill is your family on a given year? Oh well. I don't. I have haven't heard that it. phrase in a long time. But I would consider my family pretty ill. Like they're, you know, I hate them because I don't see them at Thanksgiving because they're on the cruise. But they're pretty cool. Okay. I. Well, I meant ill as in physically, medically ill. Uh, oh, so they're that's... mentally ill. Okay. Well, I I didn't mean physically, but they are also mentally ill. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, you say it like you're bragging. Oh, yeah. Okay. No one's family is as ill as mine, for sure. 100%. Mentally, though. Yeah, they're straight up crazy. Okay. Well, uh, cool. Um, I feel like we can go ahead and move on from here, then. Okay, that's fine. I think I've heard enough about your family's traditions. Uh, All right, uh, thank you, Cameron, for sharing about, uh, yeah, this... The, this exciting these exciting you know the hooves the uh the, the duck butt and the the person pie oh yeah all right and yeah yeah i think that's enough with arms wide open <laughs> so cameron actually i was meaning to bring up um a few traditions like well for one thing what Oh, Dr. London, I'm so sorry I'm late. 
Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so Hello, sorry. Right? Just reintroduce. Just reintroduce what? me. Uh, reintroduce. I'm sorry. I don't think I've introduced. Just say the part about how I'm. I'm the heartbeat of the podcast. I'm the best. I'm, you know, producer Cameron, and then I can come on and say, "Hey guys," like I usually do. Wait a second. Um, Are these my thoughts? No. Okay. I- I don't... Wait, what are you doing I'm here? I'm seeing another person. That's the imposter. That's the imposter. Wait. I'm like someone stole my identity. I'm late because I've been trying to battle the person that's trying to steal my identity. And he's right here. Wait, 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 wait. Who, who are you? I'm Cameron. Producer Cameron. This is tripping okay. me out. Of the Jock Doc podcast. Yeah, I'm familiar with that podcast. On the Casey Anthony podcast network. Okay, no, that's, that's not good. And we need to, that needs to stop. Um, they just okay, so, so much. I need to go and clarify here. Uh, for one thing, so I introduced Cameron earlier. Uh, is your so your name is also Cameron, sir? I am Cameron, the producer. That's the imposter. That's the person that's been trying to steal my identity. Wait, a, whoa, 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 whoa. Lots of accusations are flying around. I don't think I'm an imposter. I I also don't think so. Like, I recognize Cameron. I can't Cameron. guarantee it, though. Yeah. Okay. Could you tell us about other Cameron? Can I call you that for now until we figure this out? Um other Cameron, what? How about, how about, okay, how about I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Cameron Purple, and then okay. uh, other Cameron, do you want to be Cameron Yellow? I don't like being called other Cameron. This is my podcast on the Casey Anthony Podcast Network. I did a lot of good work on that deal, and I'm really angry that you're here. You're the imposter. I did do a lot of work on that deal. And if there was an imposter, I would be mad. Okay, w- let me ask, how how else has Cameron, sorry, this Cameron who we were, I was talking with a moment ago, how long has he, and in what ways has he been an imposter? He tried to steal my identity two weeks ago. Okay, how I did he do I caught him that? in the act, though. He was at my house, trying to clean my bathroom. Okay. Trying to feed my dog. I said, get out of my house! Stop trying to steal my identity. Okay. Denied. And Cameron, did do you have memory of this? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do remember that happening. Okay. And I did scurry out of there. Okay. But I was in my own house. Or I thought I was in my own house. So, so two weeks ago, this person uh, here that... I was in my house feeding my dog, eating dinner. And then someone, uh, apparently also named Cameron, came in. And accused you of stealing their identity, and you yeah. <laughs> you left because I get yeah I dropped everything that I was holding. I had a tray. I had a whole meal to feed my dog, and, and I dropped it and I booked it out of there because you believed their accusations. If anyone accuses me of anything, I'm gone. Oh, okay, I see. So it's not so much that you admit guilt; it's that you you just don't want to be caught. Yeah, it's it's my own personal code. Right. If someone's pointing a finger and saying, hey, I'm gone, booking it. Okay. So uh, Cameron, meaning Cameron, what did you say? Cameron Purple is the one that I was talking to earlier. I'm Cameron yeah. Purple, yes. What is the other Cameron? Cameron Yellow. Cameron Yellow, is that, can I call you that for now? I don't accept that. Okay, what would you I'm prefer Cameron. to be called? Okay, just, oh, say Cameron Purple and then just Cameron. Okay, that's okay. fine. So, Cameron, not Cameron Purple. Cameron, uh, what were you doing prior to two weeks ago? Living my life on the Jock Doc podcast. What do you think? You've been here the whole time. That's what I would have been doing. Okay, what? Living your life on the podcast. What do With you mean With arms that? wide open. Okay, this is getting weird. Under the moonlight. Yeah, that's. That's basically me. Yeah, Cameron Purple. Uh, do you yeah. want to? Can we sidebar for a second here? Sure. Okay. So, Cameron Purple. Um, I don't. This this person doesn't look like you. Yeah, they don't look like me at all. 
But it, what if they're not me? What if I'm them? Okay. Well, Cam- Cameron Purple, what were you doing prior to two weeks ago? I was living my life. I was doing the Jock Talk podcast. Uh, everything that Cameron just said. Okay. That's what's tripping me out about this. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go back to the conversation. Okay. So, um, Dr. London, who are you going to believe? Cameron or me in a Cameron wig and mask? Yeah, I guess I'm I'm just pretty confused here because both of you, well, one of you, Cameron, as opposed to Cameron Purple, Cameron, you seem far more assertive in your role as Cameron. Okay, so, fine, you caught me. Oh, okay. I'm not Cameron. Because I was really I just, giving into it for a second. Okay. I just really hate everything about my life. I'm miserable. I have a lot of money. I've spent a lot of money and time on my hobbies and things, and they just, they don't fulfill me or make me happy. So I tried to steal someone else's identity. But the reason I was late, actually, is because I was swimming in a pool of gold doubloons. I'm just upset because I've never gone all the way. So don't know what what, that's about, but. what, 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 What do you mean by that? Gone all the way. I just have never been all the way. Okay, I feel like... And I'm depressed who, who, about it. Who are who are we speaking to right now? Well, is I'm DrLondonSmith.com. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, well... Wait a second. Well, Cameron Purple, I feel like... Well, wait, who are you? No. If that's... Okay. Wait... Uh, well, I think I think I think I think yeah I got okay uh okay I yeah I uh yeah I think I think we can uh move on from there. Okay, this does sound like me. Yes, sir. Yes, Doctor London. Yes, sir. Is suppositories. Sometimes you gotta use them. Some days you don't. Okay. Find out why on this episode of the Jock Doc Podcast. Like I said, sorry I was late. I just was doing laps in my pool of gold doubloons i'm a very oh, wealthy, yeah. wealthy 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 no man. dr london yeah dr london it, it it's fine no i you you know i love your wealth just as much as you love your wealth okay no yes i should clarify here i i don't think that this sounds like me i never talk about swimming in a pool of gold doubloons Ooh, wait a second who wait who are okay all right i need to figure this out who are you okay cam Talking Cameron right Purple. Now. This is me. I was the one who was talking to you at the beginning of the podcast. I am LondonSmith.com. Okay. okay. Th- so let's call you Dr. London Smith Purple. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then, okay, other. Um, I I'm DrLondonSmith.com. Okay. All right. So we've got Dr. London Smith Purple. Okay. And then, and then we just have Dr. Smith. London Smith. Yeah. I think they said .com. So that's. Okay, well, look, I, I can't tell who is who right now. I need some proof. Listen, Cameron, who are you going to believe? Do you want to see London my ID? Okay. or me in a London mask and a lab coat drenched in blood? And that is, so you were just layering well, the mask. You have a London mask and a trench or a whatever, lab coat covered in blood. I'm sorry. Hmm. That, that is something Dr. London would you have. You were wearing the londonsmith.com mask and lab coat covered in blood under just like dr london the cameron would. outfit okay y'all caught me duck butts it's me dj dylan in the house okay it's me dj dylan in the house Okay. Well, admittedly, it, it always it always kind of feels hard to see DJ Dylan. Like, and he's always back there mixing his music, and I feel like he's more of a presence than anything else. Who are you going to believe? DJ Dylan or me in a DJ Dylan wig and furry vest with no shirt on underneath? Yeah. I I mean, Dr. London makes a good point. Okay. No, I. So, I'm. That's no longer Doctor London. They're claiming to be D- DJ Dylan. I'm claiming R- to be 
yeah, Dr. London is DJ Dylan, which is, hu- this is huge news for me. Okay, no. So, my, I'm Dr. London, Smith.com, purple. That, that is the same person who's been impersonating every one of us, apparently. Let's ask, let's ask DJ Dylan first. Okay, DJ. Mr. D- Mr. DJ Dylan. Yo! Are you also Dr. London Smith? Yes. According to my credit card. Okay, and this is a question that has some difficult implications for me to wrap my head around, but I, I'm willing to accept the truth. Are you, are you pr- also producer Cameron? Tell the truth, please. According to one of my credit cards, yes. Dr. Lyndon Purple, can we talk in private okay. real quick? What is going on, sir? Well, it, who are you? Who am I? Okay, it's a, are we just thoughts? So this looks like an example. Are we just concepts? Of identity theft. I, are you familiar with that concept? Yeah, I mean, sh- yeah, I, people, cops have said that to me a bunch of times in the so, past. If you steal someone's credit card or some other form of um, accessing their, uh, I guess, personal finances or information, and then they use that for personal profit, then, you know, uh, then that's called identity theft. But, Dr. London, if he's Cameron and he's Dr. London and I'm just Cameron Purple, and you're just Dr. London Purple. We don't even have the real official titles anymore. Uh, well, that was a temporary who thing. Are, who are we? I I think that those titles were temporary. That was my understanding. I was not formally, legally changing my name. But who 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 is, who, who is more likely to be Dr. London? The person named Dr. London or the person going mysteriously by Dr. London Purple? That doesn't even make any sense. I, I agree that Cameron Purple. Who? What is that? I agree that it doesn't make sense. It was your idea. Um, All right. Let's. Can we? Can we? Let, let, let's try to talk okay. to uh, talk to Dylan Cameron London over here. Okay, Mister uh, Mister Dylan Cameron London, sir. Well, okay, because Mister Dylan Cameron London. Oh, okay. They're gone. One thing that I do notice, though, is that, Cameron, you left, you told me you left a wallet behind, and you kept saying a wallet. Could that have had my credit card, your credit card, DJ Dillon's credit card? Well, I don't think it had credit cards at all in it. It was more like, it it was more of like a bag that had like passport, social security cards. Okay, and so why did you, for one thing, why did you have that bag? Because like, I wasn't even gonna bring it up on the podcast except for this whole identity theft thing. But you you had called me up at three a.m. and said it's yeah. gone, and then I then I called you back and you like you wouldn't. Pick well, yeah, it up. I was busy dealing with the IDs and stuff. Yeah, so what what did happen? Because you said our passports? Cuz I like I don't I keep that, you know, kind of locked away well, yeah, and everything. Yeah, but I was just making copies, like backups. Why why were you doing that? I why was I making backups? Yeah, I because I think it's just smart to have. Normally like that's my personal Yeah, but that's more like a personal responsibility for each of us rather than like I never asked you or gave you permission well, to I, access. Well, I just think it's smart effects. to have kind of backup copies of your identification. And this, so this guy that I met, he was saying the exact same thing. Like it's really smart to have backups of everything, and he he would take care of it for me. So I was like, oh okay. If I got him the copies, he he would keep it in a safe place. So you just gave it. yeah. Gave so the guy who had the safe place, what's a what's a safer sounding yeah, place I, than a safe place? No, it does sound safe. It's just uh, like it sounds like potentially he was a dishonest person, and perhaps he went and stole our identities and got credit cards using our social security numbers and then that kind of information, our financial information, and then 
like that they were on the podcast but just now. Do you see how that I don't, could work? I guess I just don't even understand why I would trust you, Dr. London Purple. I don't even know who you are anymore. Right. I and I I don't really know how to talk you back into it. Dr. London, if you're listening out there, Dr. London, please contact me. I don't want to talk to this purple man anymore. I don't know what I am or who I am, but I am at your service. I will do whatever you tell me to do. Just give me guidance, please. Okay, I feel like this is going to this will take some hashing out. We uh that's that's a good time to just call it. Um thank you to uh I guess thank you to our guest, which Cameron, you told me we were having a very special guest today. Did you know that this person was oh, coming? Oh no, our guest was Michael Jordan. And you you were you booked yeah. them? Yeah, oh yeah. And what what happened to Michael Jordan? I well, I mean, he's here. Oh, is he waiting? Yeah. But I mean, the episode's okay, over, so well, we just need to wrap it up. No, no, we'll no, no. We can him. we can have hey, Michael. Michael Jordan on. Uh, hey, yeah, well, you're not going to be on, man. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 hold on. You, I mean, Michael, uh, Michael with Jordan all these revelations today, there's a good chance that it's Michael Jordan purple, which I wouldn't trust at all. Oh. Okay, or it could be the very okay. Okay, yeah, then let, let's go ahead and just call it. Um, all right, well, thank you to everyone who's on today. Once again, uh, to to the, I guess, thank you to the identity theft for the thief for being on. Uh, thank you to Cameron, as always, uh, for co-hosting here, for being the producer, getting everything going. Um, thank you to DJ Dylan, the host. <laughs> Dr. London, yep. purple, even though I don't know who you are, and I don't trust you, and I don't know what you're up to, and I don't, I can't tell if you're a real person standing in front of me, or if you are more of a concept. I, I, I don't, I have to really think through all this information that I've learned today, but regardless, I do want to say, I've had a good time, and I really think you need to include some hoof in your next Thanksgiving meal. Uh, all right, I'll take that into consideration. Uh, well, my name is Dr. London Smith dot com uh, purple today. Um, and uh, thank you to everyone and happy Thanksgiving. This has been the Jock Doc podcast. Gobble, gobble. Oh wow, what a thrill ride. The action was non-stop. And did you see those hunks? No? Because this was an audio recording? Okay. Well, just so you're aware, today was actually the bi-weekly local hunk parade, which raises money for an organization that they refer to as ourselves. In any case, this parade was going on throughout the recording, so if you noticed anything bad in the episode of the Jock Doc podcast, uh, it is because we were distracted and stifling the word AUGA throughout. Um, if you have been stifling your words, you can go ahead and stop doing that meow by leaving us a five-star review with your favorite part of your local town's hunk parade. Um, and you can do this on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Ooh, ooh. And be sure to text a link to your favorite uh, of your favorite episode of the Jock Doc Podcast to your friends and family. Or just send them our handy website, jockdocpodcast.com. And you know what? Maybe send Dr. London your favorite hunk. I, like in a package? Maybe their package. Uh, thanks for listening.